Hello friends, welcome back to the shop. Today is Sunday, May 2nd. It is a beautiful day. It's already 60 degrees. Just not warm enough for me to be sitting outside in my shirt sleeves smoking this, so I'm gonna stay stay here in the shop. But really happy, beautiful day. Lots of yard work to do today. It's gonna to be fun. Uh, this morning I got a little treat, uh, and the purists out there are going to not like this. I'm going to be smoking this White Owl Sweet Little Cigarella Panatella, I don't know, uh, gift from my buddy uh, Kilted Piper Steve. I've been looking forward to these since I got them. I know you folks are going to look and say, oh, it's a, it's a factory, you know, paper-wrapped cigar, blah, blah, blah. They taste good. I like them. I grew up with this kind of stuff, so indulge me. Ah, uh, it's been it's been a while. I used to buy, you know, back when I was first smoke. So I was a cigar smoker before a pipe smoker. Uh, but this was back when cigars were cheap. I mean, even premium cigars were were very affordable. But. You had to find them, you know, you had to go to a cigar shop and all that. And I used to just go into the drugstore and buy a box of White Owls or, um, uh, or some of the brands. Gosh, it's been so long. El Producto, I think, was one. Um, there was a Prin Prince Edward, I think. And, you know, you could buy a, a box of cigars for like $16 and you got 20 Cigars, these kind, you know, machine wrapped. Uh, this is not a tobacco wrapper; it's a paper wrapper. So what? Cigar leaf, enjoyable. These guys, they they dip the. I don't know if it's the end of the whole cigar in something that's a little bit sweet. It's got yeah, the slightly sweet, almost cherry flavor that. Is on the wrapper. It's not in the tobacco. Though. So yeah, you can you can uh, tell me I'm nuts or or tell me you would never smoke one of these, but you're missing out. And hey, that, oh, I cut the price off, but two for ninety nine cents, That's, and 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 you get this little resealable. Uh, pouch, you could probably buy one of these, keep it in your car, and like three years from now when you want a cigar, just pop it open. There you go. <clears throat> it does the job. So, beyond uh, cigars, what was I going to chat with you about today? Um, I've been thinking and reading and just had this concept of balance sort of bouncing around and I, I I don't really know where it's going at this point but I thought it was interesting I've gotten to a point where you know I'm I'm a happy guy right and I've got a great job, I've got a wonderful wife, I've got a hobby that I'm really passionate about in, in pipe restoration. I've got a I've got other hobbies that I'm really um, excited about, like fly fishing and, and I've got sixteen hours in the day. Because I try to sleep eight. And the truth is I've never really sleep eight, so I probably have 17, 18 hours in the day. Okay. You can't do everything in that amount of time. And it seems like when I was younger, I could work all day, eat dinner, and then I'd be like, <clears throat> hey, let's go do four hours in the shop uh, working on pipes. And I'd love to, but I just finished dinner. I'm like, eh, 
do I really have to do the dishes? You know, <laughs> that's a level of energy. And then knowing for a fact that I would, I would come down here and work on pipes for a while, and then I would go and I would tie flies. You know, that, that, and, and do that with some music, or, or maybe I'd just read a book and until I went to bed. And now I just want to sort of space out and watch YouTube and, you know, maybe read. So that's not good. You know, that's not a good place to be. I need more balance in my life. So you have to start prioritizing things. So what's the most important? Well, if I don't do my day job, I don't have a house anymore. That's pretty important. Uh, Got to take care of the wife and you know pay the bills and all that stuff. So yeah, day job probably pretty pretty darn high on the list. And then you got your, you know, your your taking care of business type things. You know, gotta gotta get the roof repaired. Gotta gotta get the lawn mowed. Gotta dig the garden. Gotta clean the windows. Whatever you do, you know, that that stuff's important. And then there's probably something that you're passionate about. Um, and that might be baseball, which is another thing I could put on my list. Uh, it might be gardening, which is another thing I could put on my list. It might be fly fishing, which is already on the list, or it might be, you know, deep sea fishing or whatever, whatever, wood carving, um, quilting, you know, the, the, Whatever it is, there's something that you're passionate about. And then there's all these other things you want to do. How do you get enough time in the day so that when you get to the end of the day, you can say to yourself, I'm satisfied I did what I wanted to do today. Not just what I needed to do, but what I wanted to do. I don't think you can. <laughs> We can't, we can't add time to the day. So where does that leave us then? Well, with our old friend prioritization, which seems to be the answer to many things. So the job's important, as I mentioned, the things that you're passionate about are important. Where, you know, what do I wind up having to lose? Well, television is one, you know, I, I hardly watch it at all, but I do. And my wife and I do watch some murder mysteries, which I've talked about before, and they're great. And I don't want to, I don't want to give that up. But the mindless stuff, you know, the stuff that it just happens to be on, and you get sucked into it, that's got to stop. There's got to be other things like that. That's just the the one that I can think of right now. And then, you know, it's really important to, I went through that list of, you know, what do you have to do, what do you want to do, what do you need to do, you know. It's really important to build in time for rest and relaxation, you know, for just sitting out on the patio in the morning, smoking a cigar and drinking coffee. That's, that's an important part of life. We need that time to, to mentally restore so that we're able to better do the other things. You know, it makes us a better person in the end. Um, I want to be a good husband and I want to care for my wife. But if I'm, if I'm stressed to the point of no return, I'm going to snap at her when she says something I don't agree with. So if I take that time out to just, just for myself, just to, to relax and, you know, to use the hippie term, meditate or whatever it might be, get my thoughts in order and calm myself down. Then when she comes along with her airbrained idea about replanting the grass or whatever, 
I can say, oh, honey, that's interesting. Let's let's look at that and you know, see what we can sort out. Um, my wife doesn't always have harebrained ideas, but sometimes she does. And I've had quite a few harebrained ideas myself. Oh, how do you find that balance? I don't have the answer to this. But I think it's something that's, uh, you know, becoming more and more of a challenge. You know, these, these things, these things are stealing time. Um, they're stealing time from the day. For, you know, Bob wants to know if two Saturdays from now you can help him put a new battery in his car or whatever. Great. I don't need to know that right now. I, you know, Bob can call me after dinner and we can chat about it. Uh, Bob can wait until I see him at work tomorrow. I don't need to know this instant that Bob wants help changing his tire next, uh, changing his battery in two weeks or whatever. And so much of what that phone does is is like that. You know, I just don't need to know it right now, but it's given to me right now, and now I have to react to it. And that eats up time. It, it, you know, you get a text message, you feel, I feel, I don't respond to that in a reasonable amount of time. That person's going to think I'm being inattentive to them, that I'm ignoring them. And it's obviously not true, but it's 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 what I think. Yeah, those things are terrible. I honestly think if it wasn't for YouTube, I would get a flip phone. I know I'm an old guy. And I say if it wasn't for YouTube because I use the phone to check comments and things like that. That's really the main thing that I'll do with it during the day. Uh, I will sometimes look at my email. I do not have email notifications. And of course I use it to stay in touch with people, you know, through text messaging and, uh, and phone. Anyway, I think you get my point. <laughs> I, and I think many of us have a problem finding balance in our lives. And the, you know, the, the problem is simple. You got so many hours in the day and you got more hours of stuff than you can fit into those hours. The solution is not easy. But I suppose that's just uh, modern life. Ah. Uh, Things here are, are humming along in the shop. <clears throat> Working on several things, in, including uh, getting that um, dog pipe, spaniel pipe, uh, ready for my friend Jack Kurtz. Hoping to go visit Jack in about two weeks' time. So I got a, a bunch of pipe work I'm doing for him. And I'm going to do a video on the, uh, the custom-built spaniel pipe. So that's something to look forward to. Got a video series starting on Monday morning for uh, on a Medico Guardsman that I restored for my friend and our friend uh, Johnny Ford from Ford Smoking Pipes. I already put up a post. Go and see Johnny's intro video because you're going to want to see that before you see my first video on the Guardsman. Uh, he did a nice overview of the pipe, and, and he talked about uh, a little bit of its history and potential military history, which is, is really fascinating. I didn't get into any of that in, in mine. I talked more about the medico history. So you really should see both. Uh, so go check him out. If, if you yeah, didn't see the post, I'll put a link below for, for that video. And, you know, if you're subscribed, if you hit the notification bell, you'll find out tomorrow morning when the um, the next, the, the first installment in this Medical Guardsman series starts. It's uh, four videos. And it, I was hoping it would be less than that, but actually some of the work got to be a bit, uh, a bit more, 
challenging than I, than I expected. There's some interesting stuff in this part. That'll be tomorrow, uh, this Friday. Uh, it's going to be Cane Rod Pipes Virtual Pipe Club. So just me, me and my pipes. We got, we got some great guests. We've had some great guests. Uh, last uh, Friday, we had uh, my buddy Mark Bama Guitar Dude, and uh, that was a lot of fun. He, he's just a, he's a fun guy to talk to. Great guy. Next Friday, not not the coming Friday, but the one after that, um, I'm going to be talking to Trevor Talbert, uh, fantastic pipe maker. Uh, Godzilla fan and comic strip creator. If, if you don't know who Trevor is, uh, I'll link to his website below as well. Uh, really re remarkably talented and creative pipe maker. And I'm looking forward to, to getting to know him a bit and uh, sharing that with you all. Anyway, I am going to finish this uh, this excellent little cigar and you know for what you got to take it for what it is it's it's wonderful so try them you'll be surprised so thank you steve i've really enjoyed it i'm gonna drink some more of my eight o'clock coffee and then i'm gonna go outside and dig in the dirt and do some gardening so i hope uh you all have a fantastic sunday great week ahead and until we speak again, I'll look forward to talking to you all again soon. Goodbye now.